Hello and well met, friend. My name's Tinka, and today I'm going to be talking you through my process of like designing and planning out a new LARP character. I'm working on a character which I'm going to play in September, um, and I'm really, really excited about it. So I thought I'd kind of like walk you through kind of my thought process when I started thinking about this character, as well as the outfit. Um, very important. For those who don't know, uh, LARP is live action role play. Um, I've had some videos on my channel about my experiences for LARP. I'll put them below and I'll also link some of my favorite LARP creators. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. The LARP I'm specifically prepping for is called Shire Town Shindig, and it's basically Bilbo Baggins' 100th and 11th birthday. Like when my friend messaged me, every fiber of my nerd being started freaking the fuck out. It's just like some happy halflings eating and living a provincial life and playing games and getting to know each other and dancing. It's basically like cottagecore the LARP. I guess. It's really dedicated to 360 degree immersion. Um, there's no like playing to win. There's no real rules um, except like being a decent human being. Um, you don't even have to get your character concept approved by anything. Um, you're just expected to show up and be respectful. It's all sold out this year, but I'll post the information below in case anyone's interested in looking at it. The game is structured around a big halfling family reunion, which happens every six years. Each family attending has a color scheme and some core personality traits. There are so many families to choose from, such as the hardworking Blue Bottles, the Happy Higglebees, and the adventurous Tallows, along with many others. My friends and I chose the Tallows. I'm the type of person who just has a whole arsenal of characters just waiting to be used. I've had this like Polish themed cottagecore elf in my sketchbook for a while. Sketching characters really helps me get like a personality and a vibe to them. If you're also an artist, I highly recommend this method. I knew this character was a little bossy, but a total romantic, loved to dance and cook, and grew up appreciating the small things in life. I named her Magdalena, or Magda for short. It's a pretty common old Polish name. If this seems really random, I am first-generation Polish-American. When I heard about Shiretown Shindig, I decided to pull her in and change her up a bit just to better fit with the story. She's now a halfling, since we all have to be halflings, and she has more of an adventurous streak to better align with the family me and my friends chose. She also has an angsty D&D backstory, which, I mean, tell me if you guys want a video about that. I'm all for it. But for this specific event, I definitely dropped that, so she is now just like a happy, angst-free halfling. And with all of that, Magda Talo was born. All right, let's get into the costume. So the game's design document said that the aesthetic is 18th century British and Netherland inspired. Basically, if it looks good in Lord of the Rings, it works. Since we chose the tallows, we generally need to keep it orange themed. The hair and makeup were taken directly from my original sketches. She works in the apple fields and does a lot of manual labor, so I put her in long blonde braids and gave her some freckles from the sun. She has overdrawn pouty lips and a light youthful looking makeup. I also decided on this look because it's kind of easy to do, so I can just kind of throw it on in the morning with a LARP and go on my day. I wanted to keep the outfits easy-ish. I didn't want to make a whole new outfit. So step one was just to look around to see what I already had. Here is the base of basically all my outfits, a chemise I got from Holly Clothing. It's a bit more opaque than what I was hoping for, but it's nice and ethically made, which is a plus. I highly recommend getting a chemise for any fantasy wardrobe. It's a very diverse staple piece. Next, I looked around and found this. It's my older sister's, but she offered to lend it to me for the game. It's perfect for Magda. It's comfy and orange and has pockets. There's no zippers and it's kind of made of an old-ish fabric, so it fits really well into the world. So this is the base. Pretty plain, so let's spice it up. Magda would totally have an apron. I found this one in my attic. Literally no idea where it's from. But it's really cute and adds a bit of contrast and color to the orange. A belt is super useful, and from it I hung a pouch where I can store things and an indecorum drinking mug I got at a flea market for $3. I thought that Magda would totally be the type of halfling which carried us around a handkerchief, so I grabbed a cute and festive dish towel and added it. Magda will be carrying her homemade apple jam to share with her fellow halflings, 
So I grabbed an old basket I got from a thrift shop for like $2 she can store her jars in. Her hair was looking a bit plain, so I added these fall themed flowers. I think my mom probably got them from like Michael's years ago, and I made some little hair accessories. Finally, I got some red ribbon to tie in the ends of her braids and called the look done. However, we are not done yet because I really wanted a flowy dress. The kind where I can like spin around and like flows. This outfit is decidingly not flowy. So I decided to make a whole new outfit. I guess I can't not be extra, it seems. This time I wanted an orange circle skirt, which would do like the twirly thing that I wanted. So I just Googled circle skirt pattern and used a website for some easy measurements. Pulling from my original Polish origins, I added a stripe, which is often seen in Polish dancing outfits. I was gonna just make it plain, but this was such a pretty trim that I went with this instead. For the top, I wanted a boned vest, which you can see in a lot of hobbits slash halflings often wearing. I found some scraps which I had lying around and used a pattern which I will put on the screen because I forgot to write it down in my script. It was a bit light, so I weathered the seams with some eyeshadow. I was very proud of myself. It was fully boned and lined, and it's just like a super diverse piece that I can use for like any character in the future. I also tied the chemise a bit differently than I did in my first outfit, just to give it a bit of a different vibe. Next, well, was totally an impulse thing. Um, I saw this really, really cute fabric in the fabric store and I just couldn't resist buying it. Look at that little embroidery. I wanted a new apron, so I decided to whip up a half apron with this fabric. I just patterned it out myself. I added a magic pocket I made from a remaining trim and a drinking mug. And then I had to choose to flower crown or not to flower crown. I decided to make a flower crown just in case. You know, always have an emergency flower crown on hand when doing some kind of nature fantasy magic creature. Remember that, kids. I've also made a matching handkerchief with the apron fabric since that was my original plan. And with that, outfit two was done. Shoe eyes. Well, I am a hobbit, halfling, copyright, so ideally I just wouldn't be wearing any shoes, um, but I choose life. So I'm taking some plain looking sandals and boots with me to the event. With LARP, always remember to be safe and comfortable over aesthetic. As like a super little extra thing, I thought that if there's any time during the game that I want to wear kind of my PJs out, maybe kind of later at night, just want to chill in something comfy, kind of made like a PJ version of her as well. I'm definitely not gonna actually be sleeping in this, but I thought it was cute. So I threw it in there. I'm not even sure if I'll wear it at all. All right, so that is me going through how I planned and designed my new LARP character. I will have a video about that event um, and like my experience there. Um, I won't be filming at the event because I don't wanna break anyone's immersion. Uh, filming and LARP events is very difficult, guys. It's very difficult. I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I'll definitely try to get like content surrounding that so it won't be just like me sitting and talking the whole time. To put this kind of in context, Shartan Shindig is a side story for this larger LARP called Avarice. Avarice is a new LARP. I believe it's in like the Nordic style. Um, it's definitely a different playing experience than my uh, LARP that I've been going to, Night's Realm. The people there are very welcoming and the community is just like really, really creative up here in Massachusetts. So I'm very thankful that I've actually like started being part of this community and getting to know people. So I know some people who are going to this LARP uh, beforehand and I'm really excited to just like RP with them and just hang out and chill. Um, also, I do want to have a disclaimer that this is a vaccine mandate event. They check your vaccine cards at the door. Um, you know, they're also taking other precautions like wearing masks if you're inside like the main tavern area. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any more questions about this LARP or anything, comment below. So as always, follow me on other social media platforms. I'll have everything down in the description. And I hope you guys have a great day. Okay, bye.